your daily experiment in television, in surreal television broadcasting. Brought to you from Berlin, Germany, Artist Journal, October 24th, 2022. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. A wonderful work here. This is by someone that was posting physical NFTs, or NFTs of physical art. Controversial in my universe, uh, and but all good. I, but then decided to go digital and experiment with digital. So although this looks like physical tools, these are digital tools, I believe. It's a work by, let's just look at the name of the artist, Zala. This is a work by Zella, Digital Experimental Digital Experimentalism by Zella. So at the end of the program, we're going to look at some of Zella's physical works as NFTs, uh, but really a stunner. I think like what this looks like to me is someone who is experimenting with digital tools and it's like a child who is just really not worrying about where it's going to go and just kind of coloring and oh isn't that color pretty on that color? Like even the work, like it's not really worrying about being anything. This looks like uh, the visual representation of a child playing, right? Of like playing with toys and just trying stuff out, moving this here, moving this there. Oh, I'll try this brush. So anyways, that looks promising. Noisy traffic. Uh, and I think she was calling it, I think it's a, her, digital expressionism in a tweet. So anyways, really cool work. Buy it now for 0.55 ETH. And yeah, so we'll come back to Zala at the end of the program. A couple of uh, shout outs and thank yous uh, to who was it? So we were trying to figure out that Raphael work. So we got a couple of uh, comments here. Beautiful episode as always from Elisio Iagreca. The last painting is called Portrait of Pietro Bembo by Raphael. So it screamed Raphael, as I said to Alicio there. And also, Chi Moscow Jackson chimed in. Hey, brother, pretty sure that painting is Portrait of Pietro Bembo by Raphael. And of course, Chi Moscow Jackson is one of the two people that encouraged this show when it was just a fledgling concept on Spotify. In many ways, it still is a fledgling concept, just this time on YouTube. Uh, and Michael Nolson was actually the other guy, and they still watch, which is actually totally awesome. Loving these updates on Pokebelly's journey through the Tezos art scene. That was just posted on October 22nd or 23rd. Uh, yeah, October 22nd. So super cool uh, to have these guys back. And thank you uh, for, again, to Pietro and to Alessio. Alessio, for figuring out who this was. And I had done a search on Raphael portraits and I came up with, th not this guy, I came up with this guy. And I was like, this doesn't look right because the hands, it's the wrong way. But I mean, the colors, the composition, anybody that knows anything about Italian Renaissance painting n recognizes this work, right? It's an iconic work. So this is the one, Raphael, Raffaello Santi, Portrait of Pietro Bembo. So, and here you can get a really high resolution work. I can work with this stuff. I may. And so anyways, just, uh, yeah, I mean, look at that. So not in great condition, interestingly, but classic Raphael colors. Let's go back to our walk work. This is a work by walk. And so here, and not that, let's go with back, just so you can see the contrast. So there and there, okay, that is clearly the one. So thank you again for that. And actually one more thing I wanted to mention, when Pokebelly merch, can merch be tied to an NFT uh, to prove we bought some of the first Pokebelly merch? That's from 3D FYI. I love this idea of like merch is some work and just to kind of put this out, it is pretty effortless, but it does take a bit of time. So all this stuff, you know, in time, perhaps, should people continue to watch this show, which it seems to be continue to grow, so which is totally awesome. However, however, I do like this idea of just doing an NFT 
because that's super easy, right? I mean, that doesn't take much time. I can just make a little artwork somehow related to the show, and then maybe we do it for you know zero or point one or something, just to so people don't buy a million of these things for free. Uh, and I think on Versum, you can limit the amount that people can buy. I think you can say one each. So maybe you might need to use Versum uh, just so people don't buy like 200 of these things or, you know, you know what I'm saying? So maybe we'll start with that. Just do an NFT and whoever's watching, go get the NFT and put it up for, I don't know, a week, a day. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I love the idea of a coffee cup, too, just for personal uh, reasons. Maybe you do, too. So anyways, the fun and good times continues here. Uh, thank you for your support, as always. It continues to just kind of blow me away, frankly. Uh, continuing on, uh, is this a preview of Limbo's work on Super Rare? Because it sure looks like it. Have a good Sunday. And he mentioned he was going to do space. And here you have Nebula, the stars are collapsing. It looks like the front of a VHS DVD cover, and you got this... Just awesome use of VHS here, DVD. You know, he was doing these video games. Uh, I picked one of those up, actually. Uh, and so anyways, this looks like a, you know, a DVD. He was doing covers of video games that don't exist. And this looks like the cover of an anime that doesn't exist. So super cool. Is it a preview of the super rare work? Not sure. Anyway, uh, Timothy Julien put out a new work. Now... Maybe you haven't seen them because Timothy Julia doesn't sell a ton, but I love his work. Uh, and it's kind of got our Roy Lichtenstein feel to it, doesn't it? And But really well done and really in his own uh, style. And so edition of 10, only a Tezos 50 and only one sold. And I'll show you some of his other work. I'm actually a big fan. I'll probably pick that up. Uh, this was the first one that really got my attention. Only seven Tezos right now. Uh, and it's an edition of 10. How many are available? Yeah, and that goes right up to 15 and 25. It's called Tycho's. Uh, I just love the composition here. Let me just clear that out. Uh, yeah, a head turner. And so this was a early, not early, but something I found like three months ago, an artist. And I think he just started minting again recently with these kind of modern art prints. What he was doing before were these interiors, uh, contemporary interiors. So again, that kind of goes into my genre, and I will do, I keep saying this, I, I stopped saying it because I haven't done it yet, but the genres of digital art, I still plan on doing. Maybe when I go to Prague, if I have a couple of days off, the program, I'll use that time to just, I have an essay that's written, but it needs to be added a couple of genres and just tidied up a bit, uh, and then we can just discuss it. Uh, but you see here, uh, con in, you know, contemporary interiors, we have, uh, my, one of my favorite subjects here, the uh, workstation. I think I actually brought this up. You have the kitchen. We'll go back to the workstation in a second here. Uh, here's another workstation, the editing room. So just a really fun, cool artist. Again, a bit of a Lichtenstein flavor to it. We'll bring up some Roy Lichtenstein here. Why not? Uh, and actually just do the compare and contrast. Here is that studio we were looking for. So just all the details, the style, everything about it. So there's a good chance that you don't know Timothy Julian. Uh, if you do, props. And uh, yeah, just like you can tell, this is a guy who's got his style. He's got his art. And it looks great. Again, the painting and the painting. I love it all. So let's bring up Roy Lichtenstein here. Uh, just for fun. Roy Lichtenstein... And art and images, because he's got some interiors that kind of, kind of. I mean, I guess his most famous work are these, you know, comics. But you kind of start to see it here. Look at this, some late Roy Lichtenstein. Look at how beautiful that is. So you start to see some similarities there. Roy Lichtenstein, I've heard people, I've never seen a major retrospective by him, but I know people that have, who kind of went in thinking, oh, Roy Lichtenstein's okay, like whatever, and then went to the retrospective, maybe it was at MoMA or something, and came back and were like, "This is that guy's like unbelievable. Like he was very prolific and really just kind of explored that style of his to the core. He's Bende 
dots in that comic book style. I mean, so we all know Roy Lichtenstein here. Let me just put in interior though really quickly here because yeah, okay. So you start to see like just the kind of overall vibe, you know, kind of reminds you a little bit, but it's totally his own. Timothy Julian. So that's what's kind of cool. That's what's cool about it. This isn't just some derivative here. Um, so anyways, uh, really cool. So check him out. Uh, you can get it all cheap still, but maybe not for long. Continuing on, here's another guy just kind of in that kind of uh, style, but totally different at the same time uh, that I thought was kind of interesting. Just another kind of head turner on Twitter. So what was this? Les Vrais by Niark One, Weird Abstract Portraits. And yeah, listed for point three, improvised digital collages made with elements of digitized hand drawings and pieces of old retro magazine parts mixed with digital graphic elements to create an abstract composition of surreal portraits in a weird landscape. So very cool. Good looking work. Uh, so just again, the plenty... What is the word? There is a word that escapes me. The fecundity, <laughs> the fecundity of the digital art scene here. And look at this. So there are other pieces here that you can check out. Kind of reminiscent of some other artists that I've seen, but not, but still like totally its own thing here. So anyways, just a cool artist, Seb Niark won the Sun Foundation. And so continuing on, so Uncle Joseph by the myth sold and again, we looked at this work before with its really cool colors. I love the colors. And yeah, just another, I always like the Miss work, another classic work. I brought up who bought it though. So this went for 150 Tezos at the auction. And look who bought it. Do you remember this collector? This is the collector that Rat Cloak was highlighting as buying a bunch of grails. And so this person bought the Uncle Joseph one of one. So interesting, right? They also got this new gloom tube, which we're going to look at right away here. So anyways, just interesting to see uh, what's going on there. A new wallet, probably a new collector. And also uh, Mikey de la Creme, he just put out this one of one, which he sold for 150 and I just wanted to highlight this major gratitude to the legend Howdy Do NFT and shout out to Howdy Do is, who's bought a couple of my works for picking up the Grant Yoon inspired Wilson one of one, thus qualifying for an airdrop for future editions in the series. So Mikey Wilson is getting on the creative side of things, uh, making work. So that's super cool. And also just making cool little airdrop mechanics, shall we say. Uh, so just anyways. A lot of fun. Heads up. Gloomtube has a new work, Signs of Life. And I love this work. I was tempted to put it on the front cover there, but we've had Gloomtube at least two or three times on the front, so maybe give it to someone else. But uh, something we all recognize and I thought was great and goes with his, uh, you know, suburban wasteland uh, concept that he does ever so well. So just another beautiful classic work. I think it sold out right away. I lucked out and saw it, uh, picked it up for six. And now, let's see how much it's going for now. Going for 13 and offers for 8.50. So just a cool work, uh, garbage can. I really like this by the artist formerly known as Fax Machine. Fax Machinovich and Wasteman Goldminovich has a new one, and I really like this. I accidentally bought two because I didn't realize I bought the first one. They were only 50 cents, so and I'm happy to have a couple there of the sausage McMuff McMuffin with egg, still life digital painting by Tres A. Rodanx. Uh, so anyways, just a heads up, seemed to go well, seemed to pair nicely with the gloom tube there. A new work by Dan Control, really cool sunglasses work. Uh, so anyways, just a heads up on that really cool series. Loving how he's just exploring this very simple concept here and using his gradients in his trademark way. A new work by Dexter, which I think just came out. And I was looking at Dexter's work last night and I just like it more and more. I wish I picked up some of those earlier works uh, and now I'm sort of just kind of looking at them. 
stuck looking at them uh, from a distance here. Anyways, he's got a new work here with a car on fire. And so trademark uh, Dexter with the static imagery contrasting with just a little piece in movement. Fire like a shattered hope. That's the image of a burning car. I can only see and just keep silent. Interesting. Almost a political feeling to that one. So Santiago uh, put out this new work on exchange.art, which is on Solana. I thought this was pretty cool. And we've looked at a lot of Santiago's work before. And he is, I believe he does physical work. He has work on object. So here's just a really interesting abstract work. Secret landscape under the skin, a place where to find each other in a non-personal way, but possibly, yes, in a very deep way. So for 0.4 Sol, $11.43, 10 editions left when I loaded this up. So is this working? Yes. So you can still buy it. You know, I just, I bought one of those Sabatos yesterday. I think it was like 0.2 or something. Maybe I'll add to my Sol collection a little bit. Exchange art. Very cool. Tempting to put a series on there at some point. And of course, we recognize Santiago from his other work. And I'm sure you recognize the style. So anyways, really cool. I didn't realize he was on exchange art as well. Here's an interesting uh, kind of take on the crypto punks. This is by Aber, and Fields actually shouted this out. And so let me just show you. And it's kind of an interactive work, I think. So Pico Punk Compositions. It's like, and it loads up like a computer. And so I'm not, we'll have to look at uh, what kind of, uh, press any button to begin. And there you go. And so it's almost like a generative art. Is that what you'd call this? Because probably go up. And so it creates different variables. So it's just really cool. It's basically an art maker. It's like an art machine, an art tool, whatever you want to call it. Kind of interesting to see where this could go. So Pico Punk Compositions P8, buy for 20, edition of 50, 45 left from the Jano Lapin Gallery. And we've seen Jano Lapin Gallery before. So interesting. Yeah, Fields picked one up, Bodacious Pirate, Sean Luke, Moda, Inter CTV Collection. So anyways, interesting, interesting. Uh, continuing on. Uh, let's actually just quickly look at how many pages Jeannot Lapin has. Because I think Jeannot Lapin Gallery is reaching out to a lot of artists here. Okay, they have three pages of work. So anyways, just interesting. A couple of new nebulas from Bite by Bit. One of my favorites. This one went like immediately for nine Tezos, a nice one of one. This is the Cat's Eye Nebula, which sounds kind of famous. That's what I like about these. Like, again, kind of educational too, fun and educational. Here's another one, uh, Barnard's Bubble Nebula, one of one, available for nine. So very cool. And continuing on, so a bit of a nature theme here as we go from space to the sun. This is by Corey Haber, who I recently kind of discovered on Twitter. And look at this series here. This is on Foundation. And I mean, a pretty good looking series and not cheap. So this is how much for sale, you know, sold for 0.2. It looks like there's, it looks like they all sold for 0.18 actually. And, but look at how great these variations are. I assume it's generative art. Um, so I brought up a few that I almost just took randomly here, uh, which looked really good. Like, look at that. You know, so I guess this you could print out and they even have that nice writing at the bottom. So I assume this is like machine made art, like generative art that you'd find on FX hash or something, because there are a few other variations. It's really well done in my opinion. And yeah, I mean, this is not physical art by any stretch. This is computer made art. So just kind of interesting work again, screams Monet. Scrims Monet haystacks actually in the colors there and here. So another thing, I wonder if they used Monet as an input for the color. 
That's what this looks like to me, because this whole thing is kind of screaming impressionism. Uh, if you know, of course, Monet's haystacks, let's just bring them up for fun, because we love the history here. Yeah, these are spectacular, you know, just classic, classic impressionist works. And, you know, Monet exploring light, right? So just taking that subject matter and exploring it a billion different ways, as we see right here. Continuing on, Diego Barro has a new work. I missed the palm tree work, and I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, I'll need to. I had no money in my wallet each time I went to buy one. Anyway, there's a new one, and it looks really cool. His combination of photos and paintbrush. So the photos are getting less and less. Digital oil painting made on Procreate. You know what? It's like he's gotten rid of the photo. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So this is a digital oil painting. So let's just look at what D Diego's up to here. And did he get rid of, it looks like he's getting rid of the photo in some works. Cause here you see, this looks like it's here. And this was a really nice work, which we highlighted before. Cause you see the kind of the hard rectangle of the photo. photo. Whereas in these recent works, it looks like he's removing the photo. Oh, you can buy it for 10. So I can get it for 10. Um, it is available now. Yeah, so anyways, so interesting. So Diego continues to evolve and try different stuff. I wanted to bring this up for two reasons. This work by Holiday Salts, who I'd never really heard of, just kind of a weird, interesting work, kind of uh, paired nicely with that Diego work. Uh, this one here, or was it? Yeah. So anyways, uh, before we get off track here. So I just thought an interesting work. And if you don't know Voodoo Ray, uh, go find Voodoo Ray. This is like a great, great, great song. Uh, classic, you know, Acid House as Holiday Salts is pointing out. So they're listening to Voodoo Ray. Do yourself a favor and load that one up on YouTube after this. Anyways, just interesting work. Uh, continuing on. And this was actually burned. It didn't sell. Uh, I wanted to pick it up. I was waiting for the last minute, and I guess I woke up after the auction. So anyways, an, also a AI work by Trez A. Rodanx, formerly known as Fax Machine, Fax Machinovich. And finally, so this is the person we opened up with here. Uh, remember uh, Zala. Remember Zala. So let's go back. And so this is, these are some of Zella's physical works that they did. And I believe I brought them up here. So pretty nice. Kind of has a Marc Chagall feel to all the coloring here. Uh, really nice. And you see acrylic and oil pastels on canvas 2022, which makes me think when I go back to this other one, which is just digital experimentalism, that this definitely is digital. And you can, like even to do this pattern here would be a total pain uh, physically, unless you did some sort of frottage uh, like Max Ernst or something, or even all these lines. So anyways, here is Zala's physical work. And there's another one here. So pretty cool painter, right? And again, I brought up some Chagall here just for us. So you can see the color, colors kind of bleeding into each other here, right? And so, yeah, I mean, here's some very, very classic Chagall. So that, my friends, is your program today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for all the support. Until next time, take care.